Honey Mustard. Hey, everybody. How you doing? This is Vince Gilligan, creator of Breaking Bad. I'm Anna Gunn, and I play Skylar White. And uh, I am Aaron Paul. I play Jesse Pinkman. Uh, I'm Laura Fraser. I play Lydia Redart Quayle. Michelle McLaren, one of the executive producers, and directed this episode. And uh, W. Gelpin, and I'm the construction coordinator for the show. Hey. All right, all right. And we are not face-to-face with either Laura or Michelle or W, uh, the three of us here, uh, Anna and I and, uh, and, and uh, Aaron, because we are uh, separated by 800 miles of, uh, of geography. Uh, you guys are in Albuquerque. We're in L.A. And I, this is the first time 10 seconds ago was what, the first time I ever met Laura. I've never actually spoken to Laura. But uh, Laura, it's great to meet you. You you were so damn good in this episode and all the other subsequent ones. Great to meet you finally. It's good to over meet the, you. Over the phone, as yeah. it were. Orally. <laughs> so this is Germany. Orally, yes, that's right. Oh, right. That's, the, that's the exact <laughs> yeah. the perfect way to put it. Yes. <laughs> hey, so, uh, and I forgot to mention, I wrote this episode, and Michelle directed the living bejesus out of it. <laughs> and uh, talk about this, uh, where we are here, Michelle. Well, we're supposedly in Germany, but we're actually in a local Albuquerque high school. This is a very hard location to find because we wanted to have a completely different look than our regular uh, Breaking Bad look. And our wonderful locations department, uh, they found this school that was very new. And um, this is a cooking part of the school that had has not yet opened. So everything was very pristine, and it was kind of perfect for us. And we walked in, and, and actually, Vince, if you remember, this was written as, originally as a boardroom. And we had That's a really right. hard time finding a boardroom that looked like it was in Germany. And uh, so because it was this tasting scene, um, I think, it, I don't know if it was Mark Freeborn or who, maybe it was you, came up with the idea to make it a test kitchen, and uh, they found this, which was perfect. Wow, well, great. Great job. And I tell you, I love... I love uh, uh, Carrington Vilmont here is the fellow. I love everyone, but the, these two guys especially. But Carrington is the fellow in the white lab coat who was uh, so excited about the French. He did, he did an excellent <laughs> job. We, uh, we got him out of New York, I think. Yes. And then uh, this, this gentleman uh, did such a, such a, Norbert did such a wonderful job here. Yes, he did great. And, now, uh, there's a little shout out to you here, Vince, in one of your past movies coming up here very quickly, right? Yes. There it is. Burgermatic. Yes, this is uh this was the uh fast food chain in uh, Home Fries, a movie I wrote. Oh no, right. <laughs> Came out back in uh I'm sorry, way down the other end, the far end next to the Madrigal sign, I'm sorry you can't see Luft Waffles, which was <laughs> which was <laughs> Luft Waffles. <laughs> which was another good one. But uh, yeah, Burgermatic from uh, or BM as uh you know, as uh as the uh huh. as, and Home Fries there with uh, Luke Wilson and Drew Barrymore. And this is at high school, right? I love that sign, uh, W. You, you guys, so you guys create all this stuff and you just do such a great job building our sets and whatnot. I'm just so impressed. No, thank you. Yes, everything was manufactured from scratch and all those signs custom designed uh, by Mark Freeborn. And we prefabbed it in our mill right there at the studio in Albuquerque. And then hung great them up. Challenge. Was that hard to hang those? Uh, it, it was a challenge. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but we, uh, but it, but it, it came out good, and we made them very adjustable, you know, for Michelle to move uh, to camera, which we did a couple of them, and then uh, she got her shot. Yes, yeah, no, as 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 usual, these guys build things so that uh, we, if it's a set that we fly walls or uh, adjust signs. And coming up here, actually, this set, this is a set that the uh, that Norbert's walking into, the W built. That was absolutely fantastic. It was amazing, and we actually had to build it on location at this high school. And they had a television department and had a studio at the high school. So just for scheduling reasons, they built it right there uh, in the studio. How long did it take you to build this set? Uh, I think we had plenty of time on this one. We had like six days to build it. Mm. No, uh, plenty W, this set Plenty of time. This set was plenty raised. of time. <laughs> w, the, w and, and, uh, and our um, uh, special effects department did something great here because they had to build this set raised because I wanted to get the camera level with the floor uh, because of what is about to happen. And we had to put a fake uh, soft padded floor in here, um, but only padded it enough that it didn't hurt if you fell on it, but not so much that you could see the indentation of people walking on it, because um, you'll see what's gonna happen. And it was a three-walled set, obviously, because our cameras and lights and things were at one in there. Uh. So how'd you guys come up with this? We're just sick fucks. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> 
I mean, when I read this, I was like, oh my god. I this know. is this is a clear case of product mis misuse, by the way. Don't don't try this at all. <laughs> and I love the red toilet paper. Uh, uh, yeah. Mark Freeborn found honestly got red oh. toilet paper on the internet somewhere, and uh, and then uh, Werner made this uh, toilet actually flush. Uh, that's <laughs> actually a special effect because uh, they don't typically. Uh, you know, on a set, they don't typically work unless you make them work. You know, Vince, I can confess fire. something to you now. The toilet seat broke that night, and uh, we yeah. were we were in there with red nail polish and glue, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> putting that thing mm -hmm. back together. I'm praying to God nobody would notice. <laughs> Who, who broke the toilet seat? Well, what we had two to toilets. <laughs> 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 uh, I, I was already gone. This is W. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I truly believe it really was Michelle. <laughs> <laughs> that reminds me, there's a famous story on Plan 9 from Outer Space, uh, Tor Johnson, uh, the big Swedish wrestler who played one of the zombies, actually broke Ed Wood's toilet seat in his house <laughs> when they were shooting the movie <laughs> by his girth. That's a great story. Anyway, okay, let's talk about Breaking Bad some more. <laughs> I love this scene. I love the way you shot this, Michelle. Everywhere, okay? Your car? Did you check it? No, 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 no. It's, I mean, it's thoroughly. Yes, of course. Look, it's not in my house. It's not. In you my use car. special lenses to get that close? Uh, we did. Uh, well, actually, I'm trying to remember. We either used a close focus macro lens, um, or we used a very long lens. I think we used a combination. I think we used a, uh, probably a very long lens, uh, and then, as I said, a, a close focus macro. And this was really hard for the focus pullers to do. I mean, this was a lot of timing, and Brian is fantastic at at helping hold things a specific amount of time and all you guys are uh and being very aware of the camera and helping out with those kind of intricate moves and and holding it right you know a millimeter one way or the other and the thing be out of focus so exactly. hitting that mark yeah. as it were that's, that's a really tricky. it is a hard thing to do and then um uh, that shot that shot was we had a, a fake uh toilet seat well well we had half of a toilet seat and then we had a fake bottom with uh, Lexan on the bottom, so the camera goes underneath and looks up through the toilet. Uh. And this shot, we had a snorkel lens. Um, so W built a uh, an electrical box that you could go into from the behind, and then we had a long lens that went in straight into the electrical box. Ah, oh, wow. nicely done. And W, uh, I've said this on the on the last uh, on the uh, the last one of these audio things we recorded. This is a hell of a set. This is not a real uh, Jesse's house here is a set, and you guys did a hell of a job building this thing. It's uh, a wonderful set. It was a challenge, especially for the door and the hardware, because it was uh, nothing off the shelf. So uh, our great fabricators in the metal shop uh, handmade all the hardware in that entire set, including the railings and everything. We hand smithed it uh, right in our own mill. Matching it's the original un, it's house. Unreal. Matching, matching the original house. When we first started shooting um, on this set, uh, we would walk out the front door thinking you would forget that you were in the middle of a, a, a stage. Uh -huh. You would think you're like walking out uh, to outside, but it was just so, so perfect. And this was an add on, this bedroom. And this, these stairs right. was an add on too after the original set was built. W8, you guys mm -hmm. added on the stairs. And then the bedroom, of course, is actually a completely uh, separate set. Nice. I love this uh, montage. Uh, this great song. I forget the artist, but I love the song, and I love the way Kelly. I was going to say Kelly Dixon. Dixon a, yeah. Yeah. And I love the way you shot it. Great, great job. All, all hands on deck on that one. Great stuff. And then you had to make this uh, Roomba thing remote controlled, right? Some uh, the special effects department made that made it. Actually, um, this was our props department, and uh, Jason. Department. He got a. Uh, I believe it's a um, remote control or a um, yeah remote control motor uh, from a car, and they installed it into uh -huh. the Roomba, and then he controls it with off an app on his iPhone. Wow! <laughs> yeah, he's controlling wow. the Roomba with his iPhone. Yeah. You are so easily fooled here. I swear to God. No. <laughs> Aaron, you're so awesome Jesse. here. You made me cry when we were doing this scene. I know. Uh, me too. I'd watch it in the editing room. Just uh, that first time seeing the whole thing. Or yeah, just Jesse. Great. Jesse is an emotional wreck. <laughs> you know, he just has gone through it. Yeah, good. He wants to give it. Let me get yeah. This. Up. 
Walt is the devil here. Even Jesse's uh, tears here coming up are so moving that uh, even Walt, you can see that twinge of guilt. Even even in the devil himself here, uh, the Walt, uh, you can see this twinge of guilt he has coming up here. Aaron, you're so great though. You're so you're so bold and brave, and you just were so completely lost yourself in this. It was amazing. I almost shot you. Hey, hey, now. No, I almost killed you all because. The how the, where do those tears come from? Is that some kind of glycerin that you put in? The... That's the real deal. <laughs> <laughs> I saw. I'm them. just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they beat me up in between takes. <laughs> I am so impressed. You guys, all you guys, uh, we're, I, I said it in the last audio commentary, I sound like a broken record. We got the best damn actors anywhere, TV or movies. And that includes uh, uh, our regular cast, and that includes the wonderful actors we bring in, like Laura. And uh, we're, we're lucky to have the great acting, the, the deep, deep bench of acting talent that we have on this show. That's what, makes it, uh, that's what makes it great. And I wouldn't change a thing. You and I working together. Well, the writing and the and the stories that we're telling is what makes it easy. Yeah, it yeah. all starts there. Yeah, that is it so really true. Does. So we're really we're really blessed. It, it, it's to Why it's a gift. Every every week, every episode we get. God bless you guys. Because I've done some projects that I was just horrible, and and I blame it on the writing. <laughs> really? Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah, it helps me out. Um, but, um, yeah. Oh, then I gotta give a shout out to, uh, one of my favorite movies, uh, Kane Mutiny here is what, uh, what, uh, what, uh, Mike is watching on TV. Great movie. Check it out if you haven't seen it. Kane Mutiny is a great movie. Now, W, you guys did quite a bit of work in this house, didn't you? Uh, yes, we had to plug holes, uh, cover staircases, repaint. Uh, greens out front. Uh, it was a pretty good uh, changeover from what it originally was. So this is a real house. That yes, you're shooting it in is. Here. Yeah. Gotcha. And this is what amazes me too about W's work and the work of his crew, and 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 also the work of the lighting department, Michael Slovis. And you can't tell the real you, Jesse, and places from the uh, from the sets that are built. You just you can't tell. I mean, which one? You know, it'd be like a, a game you could play, trying to guess which one is which. But you 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 just you it'd only be luck that it could really get you through it because there's no telling just by looking at these things. Vince, this was your idea to shoot this scene in this kitchen, which was really small, and I but I loved the concept and the thing that this location allowed us to do because it had all these doorways. And one of the reasons I'm shooting through the doorway here is because you couldn't really, it was very hard to get the camera in there, <laughs> which we did. As I'm you full can of see, good but... ideas, aren't I? <laughs> <laughs> I, feel like I got a sandwich in my hand and a drink in the other. I'm like, hey, why don't you shoot it in this place? And then I wander off. <laughs> you guys have to deal with it. No, I loved it. It was such, it was awesome. It was so great. Each of us will receive a larger cut. <laughs> yeah, this was tiny, tiny, huh? And this, we, we were up in a staircase there, the camera is. Yeah, it's good, though. Thanks. It, it usually, looks great. It, it probably. It, go sorry, ahead. go ahead. No, no, I, well, no. Usually, I was just uh, gonna usually, say usually we, we, you know, when W builds, when Mark and W build a set, we fly the walls, and so, and that's yeah. one of the reasons why a lot of the time we go, we we build them rather than shoot practically. But um, this location, even though it was challenging because of all the different doorways and nooks and crannies and things, we're actually able to to get some really nice. Uh, Nice angles in here, and this wasn't the only episode that shot here, so it was it was very That's shooter true. friendly. Well, tell tell folks what you mean when you say fly the walls. Uh, we we actually pull the walls apart. W builds. Will you, w, you explain it? Well, basically, uh, when we build a, a set, it's built modular, so that you can take a wall out, or for instance, in the White House, uh, the whole fireplace unit is on wheels. A couple of screws rolls out of the way, and that's how we get some of these unique camera angles and. And then, like the toilets, we set those on a platform so you can get the camera underneath it to shoot up. Um, you know, so things come apart. In this particular case, we actually took part of their staircase out that was in that area so that they could get the camera for this particular angle right here, but then went back in for the other angle. So, mm, Impressive. 
I'm so glad you got this shot, Michelle. I've wanted this shot ever since we started shooting in the Sims building here in downtown Albuquerque. Okay. wanted this shot down through the spiral staircase, and you it's, finally got it. It's, 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 it's fun. It's really fun. This location had been turned into ca a casino by another, by a movie or something, right before we were shooting. Oh, I bet it was Vegas. I bet it was Vegas. I, it might have, yeah, yeah, I think you're right. Yes, yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's right. And uh, we, we were challenged in getting it back, but we, we were able to. Is that one with the with the with the wings? They turned this into a casino. That's they, interesting. Yeah. Was it? Yeah. Yeah, it's a full casino carpeted, so that was last minute to get everything. Did you guys pull it all apart? Yeah, the other uh, the other company did, but we were able to just sneak it in. Peter Schuler in 1992. Almost single-handed. And this is truly upstairs, or is this our set? No, this is our set. Uh, that's a that's a techno crane there that we used to to pull back across that. And this was a, our new set that, uh, that again, W and, and Mark Freeborn designed and W built. It's actually the first time you see this set. And it was the, there's two different configurations on this particular one for an office. And then we pull a few walls out, rearrange it, and then it becomes, oh, there's our gal right there's, there. There's, so. that's, that there's was our, Laura's the introduction. Lovely Laura. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, and, and Wolf Muser, is it Wolf uh, Muser is the actor who plays uh, the main guy here. Um, and, and that's that's what W was just saying that they they designed the set to configure into two or three different things at the D at the DEA. So this is sometimes the bullpen whistle pig, <laughs> whistle pig's good stuff. And I'm not just saying that because uh, they sent me a case of it after this episode aired. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't share I, I it. I huh? love it. It's good. That's why it's in here because it's good. And then and then they. Uh, they liked that it was in here, and then uh, so I'm even more of a drunk than I was before this episode. <laughs> <laughs> it's delicious. There's uh, Michael Seamus Wiles, who's uh, has been playing Merkert for quite a while on our show. Always does a wonderful job. This is his uh, his uh, this is sort of his goodbye on the show. It is. Ramy's a good man. He'll do right by you. Besides, this office practically runs itself. Bullshit it does. So that, that little uh, quick shot we had of Laura in the boardroom was a subtle introduction. And I remember, Vince, we didn't want to draw our eye too much to her, but we wanted everybody yeah. to, to notice her because we're going we're gonna to meet her in a little bit. That's right. That's tricky, isn't it? When you, when you see it in the, says in the script, for instance, that's a good example. We want to notice this, this young woman, but we don't want to notice her. I mean, we want to notice her, but not unduly so how do you how do you translate something like that how do you know how long to hold the shot or how close to be or how does that work well it's kind of uh just we we eyeball it i guess but what we what i wanted to do is was um we specifically shot it across a few people so it didn't look like we were pointing out anybody in particular um but as you could see that um the one guy leaned back as laura leaned forward so we tried to make it look somewhat naturally but the can't you know the racked to Laura, and she gave us a little look, um, and uh, we did it a few times so we could try to make it subtle and and not um, kind of in your I just in your what face. You told me. <laughs> <laughs> How was that being your first day? But was that, that wasn't. That shooting? was my second day. Oh, your first, my first day was day. the cafe, wasn't it? Yeah. Oh my god. Oh god. Yeah. <laughs> Every time I grill it now, I make a little. Michelle, more than one take. What do you mean? Yeah. <laughs> So, Laura, I gotta ask, what's with this fake Scottish accent you're putting on? on the <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm working on it for something. <laughs> it's very good, very convincing. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Laura, of course, is from. Are you from? Are you a Glaswegian? I am. Yeah. From Glasgow. Glasgow. Yeah. You have an, you have an incredible American accent. Yeah, really. Wonderful American accent. And here's your big, big scene here. You're coming up here. We did have one word though. Do you remember one word? The chamomile tea. Oh right? yeah, I was in chamomile, and you didn't notice it, Michelle. Because I didn't you're notice Canadian. it because I'm Canadian. Yeah. And then somebody else came up and said it's to uh, it's yeah. that we were both pronouncing it wrong. Well, just that doesn't mean you guys are pronouncing it wrong. We we we, we in America right. are perhaps uh, pronouncing it wrong. For for Americans, for yeah. an American yeah, accent. <laughs> I was so, so frightened oh, and on this day. I was so nervous. Yeah, and so it, thank God my character was nervous because I was just dying and I was so scared. Oh, my God. You were you so came great. You nailed it. You did great. You were so great. I love this. Laura's so first day and she had a nine-page scene or something. It was just, you did amazing. We have lip tints. 
This waitress did a wonderful job, too. She was great. Yeah. I would like a cup of hot water filter. Did you have fun working with Jonathan that first day? I don't know if I'd call it fun that first day, but <laughs> it was intense. And when it was over, I felt like we, <laughs> I felt like we shared something. And he, he said, you done good, kid. Aww. And I was like, oh, Aww. yeah. Aww. He's so cool. He's yeah. so cool. He's very Such cool. Guy. I love your oversized glasses oh, they're great. so much. <laughs> yeah. I know when they give us all the like 20 pairs to try on for you to pick then, so I was like, oh, I really hope he doesn't pick those ginormous ones. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I picked the wrong ones. <laughs> They're so great. They are. And this yeah. is Debriana Mancini, Wait, who's the waitress. She does a very nice job. How did I not? Everybody, everybody in this scene is great. You want anything else, Mike? No. Hey, so how long? We had we fun. We had fun shooting it. Yeah, and and, and I, I don't know why I'm on a kick today of doing, doing this thing. I'm always interested in how long things take, but how long was this a whole day of shooting the scene, or was it? Believe it or not, it wasn't. Jesus. We actually shot something else this day and then moved to this location. I, I wow. think we might have shot Mike's house, but uh, I, I can't remember off the top of my yeah, head. Yeah, we did. We was it Mike's, Mike's house? house. Yeah. Uh, no, no, um, Lydia's house in Thank Houston. Oh. Lydia's oh. house. The same day? Oh, the, the same day? day? Oh, no, I don't think so. No, no, no. Lydia's house in Houston was at night. So, oh yeah, yeah. Okay. But we shot something else this day, and uh, um, so we were under a lot of time pressure, and we actually started to lose the light, hmm. as we often do here. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, but we were we were able to 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 make it through. Um, but as a result, you know, we didn't we didn't have a ton of time, and and uh, you know, being Laura's first day, she was she was amazing. I mean, amazing for any day, but I mean. <laughs> I'm all pressure they run. <laughs> Those 11 men, and I think you know this, Mike. Those 11 could sink us. You and me both. People who can do different accents in different countries, and it always impressed me. I was like, because your American accent is like flawless here. Great job. Very publicly. Well, I practiced it a lot because this was my audition scene as well, so I did this so many times. Um, yeah. That's right. That's right. Great job. Great job. Okay. All it's going to take is two or three. I love Lydia. I'm going to miss Lydia so much. <laughs> My husband's not, though. Oh, yeah? <laughs> you because of all the travel? Or? Not just the travel, like the sort of uptightness that kind of just stays with me. Oh, oh, gotcha. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Or maybe it was already well, there. I don't know. <laughs> well, that's a good question for both you ladies. Well, and for Aaron as well. Does it, when you're playing... A part. I mean, uh, does it does it is it hard to is it's hard to turn on and off? Maybe. Sometimes, yeah. Sometimes it sometimes it'll um, the residual kind of stuff from the day will stay around, and sometimes you know it, and sometimes you don't actually, and and then you kind of carry it off, and you wonder. What? Feeling kind of funky. I wonder yeah. what's that about. Everything's okay. I don't know why I feel that way. And then you realize feeling so I didn't stick in his mouth. messed up right now. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I really. I used to. I used to take it home with me. Yeah. Um, and just keep it on. And because you know, when you go home, you start working on your material for the next day or the next week, and you know, you're back in the moment, anyways. Uh, but it's good to like Brian. He's always says it's good to just shake it off after work. Yeah. Just have a moment for yourself, and then uh, uh, yeah. But sometimes it's really hard to shake it. I don't know. Yeah. What kind of I remember the time I I was on the set. I'm not on the set that often, but uh, I was lucky, fortunate enough to be there when when the scene was shot when Jane died, and and Walt is watching her die, and Brian had to. Unfortunately, we had to take the 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 cast and crew photo for the season right after that, and he was crying in the cast and crew photo because he was still in that place. Yeah. Yeah. It was a uh, very, very uh, unfortunate timing. Wow. Yeah. And this is uh, the Loyola uh, coffee Thank shop you, on Central there. Avenue on old Route 66, right in the middle of Albuquerque, I think, has already shot this. Is that yeah. right, uh, Michelle? It's like, yes. Yes, that's correct. Yeah. It's a great, great coffee shop. You can go eat there. Mm. I got to go. That's a cute little booger, this little baby. Yeah. Which baby is this? Oh my gosh, we had so many babies uh, when when Holly okay. was really tiny. We had oh, so many babies. Look at that babies. baby! I know. I will. They're all so cute. <laughs> <laughs> We're you. so limited with the time with them at that age that we always had six to eight of them around when 
when now, we'd be shooting with them at that that small. They're piled it, everywhere. They're, they're, they're under everywhere. Floor. Anna, do you, do you have a favorite baby? Well, we're working with one this season that is just, so cute. Oh she's just so happy mm-hmm. and oh, she's so awesome. sweet. Yeah. Oh. Baby Mo. Baby Mo. We love Baby her. Mo? Baby. Yeah. She's Baby Mo is amazing. She is. She and do we always action. use? She follows Anna. <laughs> do we always use girl babies? No, right. We have some. In the early when they days. were little. Yeah. In the early days, yeah. yeah. Little so, boy babies too. Probably. Sometimes, yeah. Yeah. I love this shot. I love how you never see Brian's face in this shot. I, I ask for that all the time. This is one, <laughs> one of the few times. <laughs> I, I love it. I think it's great. That wasn't really Brian. <laughs> it makes sense. It was. It was. <laughs> that was. <laughs> that was Ted Beneke. <laughs> what? Oh, oh chow. Mr. Chow. 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 Okay. Uh, <laughs> so good having Chow. I love his tie. Yeah, I love his tie. Yeah. Now, this gentleman who's playing his lawyer did not yes, speak English. All right. And he came to the set with his grandson. He was great. He was really wonderful, though. He had such a great look. This is James Ning who plays Chow. And if you look real closely when he's lighting a cigarette, you can see the bullet out. scar, the scar from where... Uh, in the in season four, when uh, when Mike shot him through the hand, mm. you got to look close though. But it's there. It's, it's there. Waving your right to have an attorney present. Correct. I got to tell you, these three guys are great in this scene. I'm my Dean and uh, Jonathan are just just, uh, just uh, okay, all three of these guys are great with each other in the scene. And W, is this a build? Is this a set? This was actually a, a slight changeover of our DEA set with a couple of changing walls around using the same ceiling and. Uh, creating another set within a set within a set. Wow. Checks. I oversee loss prevention. And at a fast food restaurant, that's a full-time job. And so much thought goes into picking these colors. I know Mark uh, Freeborn always has, I get these books of swatches of, of paint colors and, and uh, with his recommendations of what the what what color a set should be. And, and 99 times out of 100, I'm like, oh, yeah, that's perfect. You know, and... Uh, and uh, yeah, because Mark has to work with costumes, this, that, everything, that so that you don't have a blue wall with a person wearing a blue shirt in front of it, and a blue yeah. tie, and everybody disappears. Exactly, exactly. So contrasting colors is a big thought about making people pop against a wall and whatnot. And their skin color and everything skin too. So. Yeah. And also, color could set can help emotionally can uh, create help create a mood along with the acting, along with the. Uh, that were, you know, where the camera Philly. is placed, the composition of the shot, all those things City work Dunham. together. It turns out we uh, we know some folks there. And they told us that your tenure as a police officer ended somewhat uh, dramatically. You want to talk about that? Not particularly. Yeah, me neither. See, I'm more interested in why Gus Fring decided to put a guy like you in charge of his corporate security. I mean, given your history. Michael Slovis. Uh, this was a very challenging set for Michael because we didn't have any windows except for the door. What else you and that's a really hard thing to, to deal with. And it was that. supposed to have the feeling of, a, of being in a box. And uh, it, it's an interrogation room. And uh, I think he did a beautiful job with this. And our colorist, Michael always says that our colorist, Tom uh, Sikori, it's on, how do you pronounce so, his name? Tom Sikori, yeah. Tom, Sorry, Tori. Tom Sorry, he Tori. did an amazing job with this. Wonderful job. Um, Michael Michael talks about it quite a bit. Colorist, for those who don't know, this is at the the one of the final stages, uh, image wise, of the show or any any movie, any TV show is is when the uh, edited episode uh, goes through color timing, and uh, this is a, a man or woman who sits in a very uh, darkened room and watches uh, the episode on a, on a fifty or sixty thousand dollar television set. That's that's absolutely perfectly tuned and aligned and calibrated and and make sure that the the colors uh from shot to shot match and that they are as as perfect as they can be uh a 50 or 60 thousand dollar television yeah you know what and and they're the last folks to be really uh using and advocating for tube tvs cathode crt uh, monitors everything now is flat screen but they've got a they've got a sony i think it's a sony tube tv that was fifty or sixty grand, or maybe eighty grand. I don't know what it was, but it's like 
this impeccable tube TV. And, and a lot of the old school guys, the, I mean, the, these genius colorists like, like Tom, really prefer the CRT, the you know, cathode ray tube TV versus the plasma or the LCD or the o OLED or any of that stuff. To his eye, the color is, is more, it's just, it's what he's used to. It's more true. It's more fitting. And um, doesn't mean that these other flat screens won't, won't get there someday, but, but, you know, and I'm, I'm not going to argue with a guy like that because this guy sees colors and sees gradations between color. I, my eye is not capable of comprehending. That's so. fascinating. It I is. never knew that. Interesting stuff. He's a good guy. He does a great job. Yeah. Two million and change we found on deposit for her way more than anybody else. Now, my partner here, he took one look at that and said, shit, man. This fifth grade girl is the muscle behind Frank's entire operation. I said, whoa, whoa, hey, partner, slow down there. Maybe it was actually her dear old granddaddy. Impressive, no, but level of insight. He's not impressed, call me. Perhaps he's picturing all that money going bye-bye. Yeah, well, I mean, the government's gonna take every last dollar unless well, here's the thing, Mike. Or Michael? Mr. Armentrop. Here's the thing, Mike. Lucky for you, you didn't touch that money. Cannot say the same for the other 11 on the list. One of you guys is going to roll on you. And then we'll definitely remember the handcuffs. Now, before that day comes, you can do yourself a solid. You can tell us what you know. You can tell us who's still out there. And if we like your story. These guys are great together. They just they really are. Might be able to keep oh, my only uh, wish is that uh, we could Maybe. we could have seen more of these guys together. What do you say? Uh, this is one of the rare scenes where Mike and uh, where these worlds collide, and, and Mike and uh, I don't know anything about Hank and uh, Gomez are together. I don't know what you're talking about. I love how he delivers that it's line. It's really fun. Yeah, it's really fun watching these guys. All of you guys work. It's Ooh, and that look on his face when he turns. Yeah. Away I love that from delivery. Them. I don't know what you are talking about. First order of business is to find a place. The greatest inflatable ever. And that's old uh, That's uh, old uh, stock footage because we can't go to back to that place anymore. It's either been torn down or turned into a, like a some no. kind of bar. Oh, or something. No, it's turned into a bar. Yeah, it's oh, a bar. Okay. Working bar. It's a bar with like a mechanical bull in it, right? Too small. Oh, no, that's the one next to it. This is another bar. This is a bar next to the bar. Ah. To the bar. How many bars? But the exterior is different, so it doesn't match at all. That shopping center has six bars in it. <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of drinkers in that neighborhood. <laughs> <does>. Wow. <laughs> Jesus. Down is trickier. I mean, you got all right. Your prying eyes. And then a tattoo partner, of course, down there. There you go. Door. Can't do without that. Probably does very good business. Mr. Aaron Paul. Where are we with that? I love, you guys are always great really together. The three guys. What do you remember about this scene? Anything? Oh, man. Mm, not much, no. <laughs> <laughs> I always am. I, every time I uh, I work with uh, Bob, uh, the the famous Saul Goodman, uh, I am so mesmerized by his ties. They're just, <laughs> you know, really, it's really his wardrobe. Look at his socks. Oh, the socks. Uh, Argyle socks. Um very next day what's the but it's so <laughs> it's so great everything about the character is just his hair incredible. Oh, yeah. that was one of the first things uh i'm sorry not bob's not on this one because one of the first things when i first spoke to him about taking this role he said i want to talk about my hair and i literally one of the first sentences like sentence number two or three when i was on the phone with him about taking this job he says let me talk about the character's hair i think he should have kind of a modified mullet you know Business in the front, party in the back. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's he does not uh, normally. Uh, uh, that's yeah, not no, his that's normal true. hair. No. <laughs> Nor his normal all. clothes. It should be pointed out. <laughs> <laughs> Jesse too, I suppose. Vince, I don't know if you remember when we were talking about oh this scene. Because we're in Saul's office, but Walt was running the show there, right. so we put him in the in the more prominent seat and. Uh, and Saul in, in in a guest seat. Oh yeah, smart. And this is Kaylee. Kaylee, I love this relationship. Such a great aspect to this character of Mike. Yeah. yeah. 
Kaja Bales. Here, wonderful job playing Kaylee. And you can see that little pig rolling around in that uh, previous cut, the thing that he's going to use uh, in a little bit to help uh, get get a leg up on the on the killer who'll be waiting for him in the next scene. A little little visual shout out to it. I like how you did that very subtly, uh, Michelle. That had that pig rolling around just in the, you know. Oh, there's yeah, I think one. we just we just wanted to have a little taste of it. Yeah. And uh, yeah, you're right, Anna. There's his wound. No, yeah, he's, this set, one, right? Mr. Chow's house is a set. I yeah. love the lighting in this shot. I think it's particular, the color, the green in the background, the sort of grades from light to dark. Beautiful lighting from uh, Michael Slovis and his guys. You see the pig there again. Yeah. All right. You give me two hours. And Chris here did a real nice job. He did. And Chris is, is uh, uh, you know, he came to us, I think, first in your episode, right, Vince? Yeah, I think in, he... In um, 413? Exactly right. Exactly right. He was an extra, and I like the idea of continuity. He was one of my, he was one of Gus's bodyguards in that scene when Gus visits the hospital, and then he's walking to the uh, parking deck, and then he senses that his, something bad is going to happen, and he avoids getting blown up. And so Chris was in those sequences, and I just like the idea of continuity and not having to introduce yet again a whole new guy in this episode. So we read Chris, who does not have a lot of experience acting. And look at the cat. Isn't that weird? That cat was not, that cat just happened to be there. And, but uh, Chris uh, wound up doing an excellent job as an actor here. Although I don't think he had, am I wrong? Am I right in saying, Michelle, he hadn't really acted before or not much? He had never acted before. Nope, he was just an extra, and he did he did great. He did a really, really good job, and and Jonathan was very helpful with him. Yeah. Um, this set is is on, again on stage, and of course we had to match it. W, you guys had to match it to the uh, exterior. Is that right? So you guys built this? Wow. No, it's actually that was that was on location right there. Now that's on stage. Right, yeah. right. So this and is we actually built a we actually built a custom eyepiece for the camera to do that shot through looking through the. The lens. We built this very oversized eyepiece so you can get that camera view. That went nice, nice job. But they have to match. You know, once we had to pick the house, obviously first, that so they could design the interior to match the exterior of the house. And why, in this case, wouldn't you just shoot inside? Just because the layout was wrong, or it wasn't big enough, or that kind of a thing? It. We looked at so many houses, and we just couldn't find anything where the the layout was big enough for what we were actually wanting to do here. And again, it's just so challenging uh, shooting in these, especially in these small houses, for lighting it, getting a camera position. And we pulled this wall here um, to get behind Mr. Mr. Chow. But you've got three actors in a scene, you've got a c cameras and lights. And houses that size, they have traditionally small rooms. Right. Well, the special effects, too, with the bullet hits. You exactly. Know, we yeah. actually had multiple walls just for this scene coming up very I earlier. I have a drawing <laughs> that Vince drew <laughs> of Mr. Chow with the blood splattered against the wall. Sorry about this, Mike. And it's a really good drawing, Vince. Oh, thanks, man. I'm sitting in the, yeah. the hair and makeup trailer, and I see it to my right. I'm like, and I had just read the episode. I'm like, wait, who, who drew that? And uh, they said Vince. And I grabbed it. And I noticed there's a photocopy, so I instantly called the office in L.A. I'm like, where is this original? Just wondering where it was, and they uh, they gladly gave it to me because uh, yeah. I wanted it, yeah. God bless you, man. It's great. Uh, appreciate you. <laughs> but it, it, it had the details of the exact color of blood that Vince wanted on it. And it was just like Man. not too dark, but not too bright light, but maybe like a rusty cut. I mean, it was it was it, it was great. Vince, what, what is your dream life like? Uh, it's it's <laughs> much more boring than you would expect. <laughs> I don't believe that. I don't believe it. This house is beautiful. Where is this house? This house is phenomenal. This is in Albuquerque. This is uh, right near the hospital. Um, okay. I'm not sure the name of the area, but it's not far from Knob Hill. And uh, it was funny because we were on a location scout. We were having a hard time finding the house. And I looked up and I saw it on a hill. And I said, "That that's the kind of house we should go to. And the location manager looked at me and said, that's where I'm taking you right now. Oh, wow. <laughs> so oh, man. He, yeah, once again, Christian found an amazing location. We walked in. And, and Vince, I think you were here 
uh, when we picked this house, or you saw it before we shot it. I and saw you it. You and I both just went, oh my gosh. You and I it. walked into it at the same moment. I was lucky enough to be on the scout that day. And you and I looked at each other and were like, oh shit, this is great. This is the place. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, young uh, Lillian, uh, who plays Kira here, Kira named after uh, uh, Kira Rai, who is our uh, New Mexico casting, uh, wonderful New Mexico casting lady. Uh, she she did such a good job, and, and Norma, the, the nanny, they, these guys did great. And of course... Uh, and that little girl, she has the same exact birthday and year and date and everything as my own daughter. Oh, that's that's right. Right. Yeah. Isn't that something? That was like meant to be. It was a kismet. <laughs> How was it shooting this one, Laura? Was it scary? Yeah, I had never actually worked with a real gun, so I was a little bit freaked about that. Yeah. Um, but I really love doing this scene. It's such a great scene. I, I told Jonathan the gun didn't actually need to be loaded, but he just, he's a method he actor. It, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was a hell of a view. I think the, 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 the folks who live in that house, uh, the the... The husband and wife. The husband is an architect around uh, who who yeah. designed all the fire stations around Al Albuquerque, and he designed the house for himself and his wife. And it is a beautiful house. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, you did such a good job here, Laura. Yeah, you're great, great here. And that's a real Albuquerque. This house at night. was actually. Yeah. And it was very challenging to shoot in this house. We were very limited what we could do because it was so reflective. Yeah. I mean, every we had to be very careful. So it's 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 surprisingly is a uh, um, it, it, you're you're really only looking in in um, very limited directions because we would see ourselves. Yeah. And Michael, of course, Michael Sullivan did an amazing job so that we could see the view in the background. Your daughter won't see you. Yes, yeah, she will. She'll find me. She never once sleeps through the night. Nobody. Laura, you're great here. Just really, you can feel the fear. I mean, you know. Well done. Thank you. No. The script is so awesome, though, yeah. Vince. I mean, when, when, what she says here is so bizarre. I know. <laughs> oh, good. I'm glad. I, that was one of those things. I don't think we had this. I may be getting my facts wrong, but this is one of those things when I actually was writing it. I thought, how would you talk? How do you do a scene where someone talks themselves out of being killed? Because you've kind of seen that scene before in movies and TV shows. What What is it she says? And then suddenly this this weird stuff about... You know, it's more or less okay if you kill me. I'd prefer you didn't. But just the main thing is my body can't disappear. I just, I thought that was, that sort of just came to me, yeah. I think. It's so great. That was genius. But it yeah. immediately says who she is as a person, like yeah. right away. Exactly. Really that's does. what's so great about it. Good, good. Yeah. That's, that's, it gives us such insight. Was this, so well, you start like uh, as the sun goes down and then you have to wrap by dawn? Is that how, is this a full night of shooting? Um, It wasn't a, Full night because we had some uh, uh, we had something to do daylight wise. I can't remember what it was, but um, I, oh, we shot the ex the, the night establishing magic hour. You know when we're when we're not establishing, but when we're outside, we were down low looking up at the house. Gotcha. That was at magic hour, so we had to be there a little early. And then we only had um, the little girl uh, Lillian was only uh, available to us for a certain amount of time. So what? I don't, I'm not sure we. I guess we did shoot till sun up because we also shot. The scene out in front of the house with Jonathan, this one here. Now, what we did is, is this is this is uh, twinkle lights in the background, long lens, and we're right outside um, the house. Oh, you did. You shot on the street out in front. We did. Okay, because I because I thought originally you was gonna do it back at the studio. No, just to fill out the schedule. We gotcha. We did that. Gotcha. You still plan to move forward? Yes, we do. So these are little like Christmas lights in the background, like twinkle lights. Exactly on on grip stands. And that's something. Wow. That's a nice shot. I like that, Michelle, looking through the kitchen window there. That's nice. And again, that's on stage, right? Yeah, this yeah. is a beautiful set, uh, W. Uh, amazing set, you guys. You know, uh, wonderful, wonderful build there. Well, it's, it's the crew that we have. We have wonderful carpenters, painters, welders, greensmen. Across the board, New Mexico crew is wonderful. They really are. Now, Anna, this scene was edited short. You remember? You know, and on the D, on the on the Blu-ray or oh, DVD yeah. that you yeah. that you're watching this on, you there will there's the extended version from in the de de the deleted scene section, so you can see the the full version, I believe.
Mm-hmm. You guys want to talk about the full verse? <laughs> <laughs> extra creepy. <laughs> the extra creepy version. <laughs> As if this isn't creepy enough. Yeah. Oh, my. God, I feel so bad for Skylar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not You're in a good, so great. Not in a good, thank you. You're great in this scene. Look at him just undressing. Yes. Like nothing's wrong. Yeah. That's the worst part. Yeah. He's just... That's what's so scary. Yeah. You know, to Skylar, it's just like, oh, my God. He's so creepy. Yeah. Yeah. She's being sort of held hostage in her own house. Yeah. And he's just pretending like everything's just fine. Do you want to talk about the full version? Because there was a big <laughs> argument, Michelle. It was not an argument. But Michelle really uh, wanted the full version in the final cut. We cut it as much for time as anything. But I'm kind of glad it's gone now. <laughs> Because tell us, <laughs> speak of what happens at the end. Because even if you watch the deleted scene, you might not fully comprehend what's happening. Michelle, <laughs> I can't speak of it. Yeah. I can't speak of it. Uh, well, Walt puts the moves on her. Uh, he wants to have sex, and uh, Skyler really can't imagine having to do that. Understandably, at this point, so to prevent that from happening, she reaches over and gives him a hand job. And oh. uh, it's really heartbreaking um and creepy and gross you know as they as they say in the trade write what you know so right <laughs> why did you take that out write what you know <laughs> <laughs> but you can see that sort of formulating in her like how do i get out of this yeah. right there wow Wow. So we had a we had a we had a, we had a big uh, crane shot. We were above and, and uh, Anna's hands were under the sheets happening. going for it. Oh yeah, right, right. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. Harkening back to the But it's just as a better day than yeah. the pilot where she was giving him a I know. It's you know. the only kind of sex. Like on HBO, the only kind of sex is doggy style. On Breaking Bad, it's just hand, hand jobs. jobs. I know. There's <laughs> nothing else. There's nothing else. Well, thanks for listening, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Way to keep it classy. <laughs> keep it classy. <laughs> keep it classy, Breaking Bad. <laughs>